Your internet girlfriend is back to talk about really fucked up things. I didn't rehearse that, I'm just a psychopath. <laughs> so, uh, we have been slowly working our way down the disturbing movies iceberg, which is this little nightmare right here. And oh boy, has it been taking a big old toll on my mental health. For instance, before I was just wearing these like as a gag. Now I'm wearing them all the time. I'm just like this now. Thank you, Disturbing Movies, for turning me into a cat girl. Which movie was it that did it to me? No one knows, <laughs> but probably Ginky Ginky. I don't wanna host this show no more. This one's gonna be rough. This one's not gonna be fun, and I'm trying to brighten it up as much as humanly possible. I want us to have some level of fun as we do this, which is not gonna be possible, and also it's not particularly responsible because we are talking about a lot of real, actual human death. Nobody wants that to be a thing that they talk about in their day-to-day -day life, but some people have jobs that require that. The person that we're talking about is myself. So without further ado, what are we waiting on? Why are we doing this? Why are we still sitting here when we could be talking about really horrible, gross movies while being cats? Part six. So put on your cat ears, girls. It's time for us to nyah our way down the disturbing movies iceberg. God, wow. That was probably one of the spiciest things May has ever said. You know, to be honest, I'm more proud of it than I think I should be. But that's sort of my everything, really. I mean, once I get 100,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be proud of this. Why? <laughs> Famously, there's Faces of Death, which is also on this list here. And I, I think that it's on the list because I think Faces of Death has this reputation for being kind of spooky ooky, ding ding dooky. But I don't know, it's not. Like, the thing with Faces of Death is that the majority of it is fake. And the things that are real really aren't that shocking. I think most of the things in the movie are more shocking in far away conception, which is often racist, by the way. Like, oftentimes the things in Faces of Death are exploiting, like, white people's fear of other cultures by recreating scenes that, that justify their fear. So Faces of Death is kind of fucking kind of stupid, in my opinion. I'm not a huge Faces of Death stan. It's it's what it is. But there is a remake coming out from the people who made Cam, and if you haven't seen Cam, it's like a pretty spooky movie about being a cam girl, and it depicts being a cam girl and the psychological implications of that in a really, really amazing way. I highly recommend it. That person is going to be writing the new Faces of Death, and I can't imagine what that's going to be, but I'm very excited for it. <laughs> Traces of Death is not Faces of Death. It does what Faces of Death does, but it's like, no, this is just, here you go. Here's the, here's the death. And it's the real deal. Here you go. So you see like automotive crashes. There's like monster truck rallies where things go wrong and explode. There's assassinations, there's beheadings, there's suicides, there's attempted suicides. There's all kinds of shit in Traces of Death. And it is like a multi-part series. I think there are five of them, but I could be wrong. And each one of them is just a document of all these people who have super duper died. And not only have they super duper died, but they died in like really ugly ways. Like they ate shit. It is what it is. If you're watching Traces of Death, that's what you're in for. We are in kind of the area of this considered not safe for life. If you're at work, probably don't talk about this. If you're with your family, probably don't talk about things like this. This kind of stuff can definitely get you <laughs> some level of social punishment, even if it's not a legal punishment. Faces of Death but real, and MD Pope but if it were way, way, way less hardcore, more dressed up, and 20, 30 years old. It's not safe for life, it's sad stuff, it's like horrible, like actual death stuff, but there's like enough of a time distance, I guess, to get a lot of people away from it in a, in a way where they don't feel like it's quite enough. It doesn't quite scratch the modern itch for, for real people death or whatever. But for the most part, Traces of Death is, is admired by many a people for being one of the most shocking things that exists. If you're brave, be brave, sister. Be brave. We'll all support you. Mondo Kane. Okay, so I'm gonna lump Mondo Kane and Africa Adio together because they're both made by uh, Jacopetti and Prosperi, who are two filmmakers most known for making horrific, exploitative 
uh, racist, going over to countries and causing atrocities so that they can film them and encouraging people to do atrocities so that they can film them. They encourage the dictator to hang somebody so that they could film the hanging. A lot of the stuff in Mondo Kane, it has like a debate as to whether or not it has any cultural relevance, really. A lot of it's debatably fake. A lot of people talk about how fake things in Mondo Kane are. And again, kind of with Faces of Death, it, a lot of it is, is meant to exploit white people's fears of other cultures. They've notably been called out for this by the film Cannibal Holocaust. And Cannibal Holocaust is a film basically talking about how Jacopetti and Prosperi were causing more atrocities than anything. So they were worse than the people that they were mocking with their films. So Jacopetti and Prosperi are very interesting Italian filmmakers. You should definitely look into this if you don't already know about them. Not necessarily for their shocking content, but more just for like, these were guys. These are guys that made movies that, and some of them are, are some of the most horrific, vile movies you can ever see. So the next thing is called junk films. This is a name that we're going to be seeing a lot. So I'm just going to start by talking about the person. Kiyotaka Surisaki is a death photographer. A lot of his work is just following around dying and, and filming or taking pictures of them or being in high traffic areas where people are in situations where they often die violently or die accidentally. He's gotten video and photo of these things. His idea, I guess, is more that it's an artistic project for him and a lot of his movies more exploit that sort of thing than they are meant to like exploit any particular fear. So junk films is more of his attempt to shock you, less of his attempt to make things that have some sort of truth or relevance to them and, and more just for pure shock reasons. And it's just a load of people dying or being dead or having already died, having their faces blown off or having everything but their face blown off. A collection of just dead shit. Buried in the sand. Buried in the sand is kind of a spicier one because, so it's an explicitly conservative, I mean, they, it's spoken, like they say this, this is a point of the movie. It's explicitly a conservative film trying to document the atrocities of Saddam Hussein's administration so as to justify American intervention in Iraq. Of course, this is like a weird whataboutism because I'm pretty sure that the, the big problem people had with entering Iraq was that it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with 9-11, but that's whatever, that's neither here nor there. There's, there's a truth to the way that we craft documentaries in that no documentary is actually objective. Every shot chosen and arranged in a specific context is always meant to deliver some sort of message by the editor. Anybody touching it in any sort of way is influencing it somewhat politically. So you have to understand that while yes, this movie is a movie about the atrocities of the Hussein administration and there were many, also understand that this movie and many movies like it and many movies on this particular list are trying to pull together a sort of contextless situation to exploit your fear of death. And sometimes it's to get something out of you. And sometimes it's just to fuck you up or take your money. <laughs> While Faces of Death was an exploitation film for the most part, it's a Mondo movie, but it's an exploitation movie in that it's trying to get you to give them your money because you are afraid of death. Understand that Buried in the Sand is a movie that is trying to shock you with something that is true and is a, is a collection of atrocities as to push this particular agenda. And so if anything, I think it's a good exploration on understanding how people can sort of propagandize something simple, but I have a feeling that the way that this one was arranged was slightly, slightly askew. Orozco the Embalmer is another film made by the death photographer that we talked about earlier, and it's a documentary basically following an embalmer uh, just in his sort of work, in his day to day. He hates his fucking job. Like the whole bit of it is that he hates his job because he doesn't feel like he gets enough time to 
to relax or rest and he, he has the desire to do the job and, and to do it right and he wants to do right by his family and by God and by all of the things that manifest in his life that have importance to him. But also, you know, it is a very taxing job. You do have to deal with a whole bunch of fucking terrible things, terrible human realities. But the thing that I'm not mentioning is that the entire time this documentary about this man is going on, he is stuffing dead bodies, putting back together people's like fucked up pieces so that they look like a presentable human for the grave. And it shows this in intricate detail because again, it's a death photographer and he's very unafraid of showing you the real truth about what happens after you die. And the truth is what happens after you die is somebody's gonna be kind of annoyed that they have to deal with your body. It's gonna be kind of an inconvenience for them. They're gonna wanna go down to Wendy's and get themselves a Frosty or some shit, but you, just had to be in their way. Doesn't that feel great? Death File Red. Okay, so this one is another really massive rabbit hole to fall down because on the surface of it, it doesn't really look like it's, a, it's much of a thing. It, it looks very similar to a lot of things on this list, but when you realize how expansive the particular people involved in this and what they were trying to do and continue to try to do, you'll kind of understand more about the seedy underbelly of weird internet videos about people dying gore porn. <laughs> so the person that uh, is responsible for Death File Red is also the editor for the Embalmer documentary, and is also responsible for Archives of Death or Archivos de uh, Muerte, which we'll learn about later. Essentially, all of these are a long series of like a Japanese faces of death, or more, I guess, a Japanese traces of death. Basically, it's just exploiting more death images. You've, you've seen shit like this if you've seen anything like this. None of these are particularly worse than the other one. Some of them, I guess, maybe are a little bit more caustic, but for the most part, it's all exploiting the same fear and it's all doing sort of a similar utility. It's trying to express to you that there is death and mutilation in the world that you live in. Banned from television. Okay, so this is another rabbit hole for you. There was a guy who uh, f fucking had a bunch of footage of really awful shit. People dying, people being assassinated, shit just going south. He was like, shit, uh, I better make something with all of this as some sort of clip show to show to people to exploit their fears of these things to get money. I can prove that this is the guy's intent behind this because later on he was looking through some footage of stuff that was banned from television. Some of that footage was girls taking off their clothes and showing their boobies. And when he saw the boobies, he thought, wow, those girls sure are going wild. And the rest was history. Yes, Banned from Television is created by the guy who created Girls Gone Wild, and they are created for basically the same reasons, only instead of death, it's sex. Isn't that just spicy? Isn't that just amazing? Wow. <laughs> Black metal veins. All right, so our homeboy Lucifer Valentine, who we we uh, remember from the Vomit Gore trilogy, uh, went on to make a documentary about some people who are super into black metal, and I don't mean like Burzum, I mean like black metal. <laughs> Some obscure ass, non-dark thrown ass black metal. And heroin. They love that. We love some heroin. And about halfway through the movie, while most of the things in the movie are, are fairly despicable and horrible, and, and they do try to exploit a lot of awful shit, about halfway through the movie, Lucifer Valentine kind of gets this idea of, of maybe I need to narrativize this a bit more. So he encourages the heroin addicts to do a bunch of fake fictional shit in, in the middle of the real world reality of what they were living in. And so by the end of the movie, you have a completely fabricated kind of terrible ending to an otherwise pretty interesting documentary about people being on heroin. Some movies are kind of beyond criticism in the sense that you kind of look at them instead of watching them. And, but this one, I think, begs to be watched. I think you want to learn about this subject. It's just a shame that it can't just be what it is. It can't just be what it's about and the people that it's about. It also has to be this bigger, more cinematic thing. There are videos on YouTube of heroin addicts talking about their real world experience and you can see sort of the conditions that they're living in. It's more shocking than this is.
in a lot of ways. The dark side of porn. Okay, so I wasn't 100% sure if this was the the notable dark side of porn or if there was a, a darker side of porn. Like, is there a secret, spooky, horrible documentary called The Dark Side of Porn about the dark side of porn? Or is it just the one? I think it's just the one. Documentary series explaining a lot of the weird proclivities of porn that people maybe don't think about. So like there's the obvious one, which is like, okay, so when AIDS, the AIDS crisis came around, porn had to just kind of stop. Shit, we could be spreading HIV and not even knowing it because at that time they weren't super concerned about that kind of idea. And then when it finally did like blow up into an issue, they had to make changes. That is a porn industry problem that, that super happened. And it did cost a lot of people their lives from HIV and AIDS. Also, uh, snuff stuff is super very real and people pay a lot of money for it. And you know, it's out there just like everything is out there. If you really wanna look for something, you can in fact find it. But the thing that's to be remembered here about all of this is that ultimately the way that you get access to some of these really horrible things is all about that money, baby. Rich people be doing some crazy shit. The things that they have access to is kind of nuts. And the, thing, the, the things they can just do, fucking crazy and horrible. A lot of like snuff stuff is very funded and that scares the shit out of people. It scares the shit out of me. And people wonder why we have like a human trafficking thing and like what, what all that's about. Maybe it's all people financing horrible, horrible, horrible rape and murder. So basically what I'm saying is if you wanna live, consider like OnlyFans. Like I wouldn't go straight to, to the porn industry, you know what I mean? Like they might fuck you over. Also, we gotta talk about another thing. I don't love talking about it and as the words come out of my mouth, I'm gonna feel bad. And and you know, YouTube might also have a big problem with part two and three of this, of this series because yeah, I mean, shit's getting worse. It's, it's, it gets bad. I do apologize, but I, I do also believe that these things deserve to be documented and you should know about these things. Specifically, if these ever, these things ever come to light, you should know about what they are and who is responsible. So with that said, there is a porn video called Animal Farm that exists. By exists, I mean, it's kind of lost in the sense that there are some people that claim to have seen it and a lot of people claim that it's just not, it doesn't exist or it's not around or something like that. I believe that it does exist because I, I've, I know for a fact that there are terrible, terrible things involving animals all over the internet. Hideous problem that I've talked about many times on my YouTube channel in the past. Even a lot of movies on this list, it's like so many of them. A lot of these filmmakers felt the need to just kill animals to make their drama and it's not necessary but people be doing it. So Animal Farm is a porn film that is entirely bestiality and apparently it's some of the worst shit you will ever see in your entire life and funded in the sense that somebody put some money down and Animal Farm became of it. And isn't that fucking terrible? That someone can just pay money and Animal Farm happens? So yeah, porn's canceled. Porn's problematic. Porn's gross. Fuck a porn. I'm just kidding, you can make porn if you want. Just don't end up in a snuff film, please. I don't want you to. And I, I also really don't want you to do any animal farm shit. Do all the porn you want, just don't do that. Akivas da Morte Saga. So this is the same as The Death Files, basically. Matter of fact, it is the same series. Uh, people argue that Archives of Death is a sequel to Death Files, I think is what it was called. <laughs> and of course, this is also, yeah, the, the editor for The Embalmer. Yes, it's called The Arc, like Archives of Death, but for some reason, like, it's more prominent in other countries as Archivas de Morte. But ultimately, it's the same general idea, which is like, hey, if you're wanting to be a doomer and see the, a bunch of people get their shit killed, here you go. It's all for you, sister. Oh boy, oh man. We have finished part six of the iceberg now. Oh boy, you know, I, I must admit that there was a part of me that never thought that I would get through this. Like I've been watching through all this stuff and, and dealing with this and like, ah oh man, it feels endless to me. Like it's never going to end. Like e even still, even right now, 
I feel like I'm I'm trapped in hell and I can't get out. It's 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 a it's a nightmare for me. <laughs> and probably for you too. I I keep forgetting about the audience. I'm so sorry. Y'all must be going through it too. You know what? Here's a hug. Let's just let's just all have a hug. Okay. I'm going to close my eyes. Okay. We're hugging. Oh, I love y'all. Part seven of the iceberg. It's time for the worst shit. And it's not the worst shit. It's, it's, there's two. <laughs> and there's two more really bad ones. And then we're going to be done. We're going to call it a day. We're all going to go home. We're going to smoke ourselves a big old cigarette. And we're going to have ourselves a glass, a, a margarita. And we're going to forget. That's right. We're going to forget. <laughs> Death to Kafar. We are, we are now, we're now lurking in the world of not safe for life stuff, so this is stuff that like, yeah, you, you probably don't want to. You don't want to Google it, you probably don't want to look it up, you don't want to watch it, you probably don't want to buy it. It does exist and it is out there. There is not a lot of information about some of these things, and I guess I understand why. That probably has something to do with the fact that nobody on earth would want to watch this. But for some reason, there are some people out there that, that actually want this and want to watch this, so Death to Kafar is for you. It is literally a mixtape, like, shockumentary on beheadings. It's just a bunch of beheadings. So if you like beheadings, this is for you. I don't think I like them unless Guar does them. Then I think they're hilarious. Gusso milk one through four. When I was young and on the internet, there were a lot of like really, really nasty, weird things that would just pop up everywhere. And you know, like Best Gore was a website and like Orgish and we'll talk about all this stuff. And this stuff has always been around, you know, Live Leak is a thing now. Rotten.com was a thing. I remember something awful always had like forums where you would incidentally end up finding things that you didn't want to find out about. And I feel like Gusso milk, one of the holy grails of that era, of that. Like, it's it's one of the things of that era that's like a holy shit, this is terrible. So, Gusso Milk is ultimately uh, what they call an eel soup film. It's eels mixed with shit and pee and like vomit and all kinds of stuff, all then funneled into a person and they put the soup into a person, and that's Gusso milk. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that just fantastic? I don't want to host this show no more. And also, it's like a lesbian thing, supposedly. So it's like two lesbians do to eels, their own feces, and each other things that that uh, God would probably cry about. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, I'll be real. I'm not a Christian, but, but I find that concept hilarious. UNKB002. You want to picture it. You want to help somebody picture what this is without giving them the whole thing. Because the whole thing would just fucking make you click right off. Like, I would click off. I'm surprised I haven't already clicked off this video that I'm making right now. So the bit with a lot of the stuff on this iceberg is like, yes, this stuff is BDSM, and yes, this stuff is scat porn, and yes, this stuff is gross and violent and, and real human death. The reason it's on the iceberg is because there's usually this like identifying factor. Like there's something about the thing that makes it, I'm not gonna say the word special, but I am gonna think the word special. You and KB002, can't just be scat porn because if it was just scat porn, we'd just be like, oh, that's just scat porn. I don't like scat porn. I like regular porn. Excuse me, I only watch furry porn, okay? It, a woman's face is used like a urinal um, with poop as well. Unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed. I wish I could say that that was the worst things. But no, no, not even close. Not even fucking close. Not even close. Not even close. We went through Gusso milk and, and not even close. Not even close. Not even fucking close. Y'all are about to learn about fetishes that y'all didn't know existed. Like you're gonna learn about dirty fetishes that you didn't know existed. And like, and goodness, goodness, May, what are we doing? <laughs> 
channel 309. Okay, so this one has a positive reputation. Supposedly people uh, like this movie. I, do, I, I don't know what it is. I haven't seen it. I looked up information about it. From what I saw, it is kind of surrealistic, heavy BDSM. And when I say heavy BDSM, I mean like people being, like women being just mercilessly beaten. And of course this is all, it's, it's satanic is the bit. So, but that's kind of the thing that people like about it. Cause like it's satanic, but also it, they tried to do something kind of artful with how evil and crazy it is. Like it's a very visual experience supposedly beyond just the fact that it's BDSM porn. There's this aspect of like weird artistry to it that people seem to really respond to. If you've seen this, I'm sorry. I. I don't know. I, I, I will not be watching this. I, I have been abused in my life and I've felt it and I've seen it and hardcore BDSM uh, and seeing women just mercilessly beaten. I don't need it. I don't need it. I sure don't. Squirm fest. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. I think I think I, I think I need more cute shit around me. I swear to God. Hi, Strawberry. Can you help me with this? I need you to explain this to these people for me, cause I don't want to. I don't want to host this show no more. I don't want to host this show no more. No, we're gonna talk about it. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so Squirm Fest is another holy grail of holy shit. It's a 1989 video film that's kind of like a dare challenge that a lot of people force their friends to watch, but it's also some really weird porn, basically. It's just, it's weird porn. So Squirm Fest is essentially somebody took a bunch of worms which is where this begins, truly. You know, the squirming around, and that's okay. That into a food processor. So a bunch of worms into a food processor, and they mix that with urine and feces, urine and feces. So they do a little food processing there, and they come up with a wonderful, wonderful soup. And I know you're thinking, okay, and then they probably ingest that weird soup and that sucks. Yes, that's true, they do. But not only that, uh, unfortunately, they also do pour some of it into a lady's sexual organs. So you're going to uh, probably want to not watch this one with your mom or dad, as they might wonder what you're whacking off to these days. And also you would be unsurprised to hear that it is made by the person who did the Archives of Death series. So he started moving into the weird porn world uh, and his weird porn world stuff is weird, dog. It's weird. You think you know about weird porn, but I promise, you don't know about weird porn. You don't. Okay, admittedly, we're also getting into stuff that isn't super well written about. The The writing that is out there for some of this stuff is not super good. Like we're, we're looking at people that are mostly fans of this stuff writing about it. So they're really excited about it. If you're trying to critically look at it or analyze it or try to understand what it, what it's all about or what it means, it's really not that kind of world for you. So from now on, most of the stuff that I'm going to be saying could potentially be hearsay. It, it It's stuff that I've read and it's stuff that I have gently confirmed. A lot of this is based on my experiences of the material, some of the fucking things that I've learned. Oh boy. So there might not be a lot of information about some of these in the future. Just keep that in mind as I go. Vomit Enema Ecstasy, volume one and two. All right, so this is the holy grail of vomit porn. If, if, if Squirm Fest is the holy grail of worm porn, this is the holy grail of the other thing. So as I said, I have a big old problem with this. Like, I don't like it. I don't need to tell you anything more than what the title has already told you about Vomit Enema Ecstasy Volume 1 and 2. My question, I guess, is just, you, you have a vomit enema, right? You have, you get yourself, you go down to the clinic, you get yourself a vomit enema, and you're like, thank you, sis, I need that enema. And then you go back for Volume 2? 
Are you fucking kidding me? Imagine that, imagine that. Imagine making the holy grail of, of puke porn and then going, I think it's time to double dip. I wanna get back into that sweet, sweet puke money. Anyway, I don't really need to tell you anymore. I'm, I'm mostly just shit posting about it, but yeah, people vomit, they do an enema, twice. Volume one and two, you'll love it. Kuso Limitless. All right, so I looked on the internet for a pretty long time about this, and I will admit that the film Kuso, which is directed by Flying Lotus, is not the most disgusting movie anyone's ever made. Like, it is not even close to as bad as Vomit Enema Ecstasy, or Squirm Vest, or Guso Milk, or Ginky Ginky, which we haven't even gotten to. So I don't think it's Kuso. I think it's something called Kuso Limitless, which sounds, as I've looked into it, a lot like scat porn. So it's probably some kind of crazy scat porn. I just don't, I don't know what the bit is. I don't know what the one little thing is about it that makes it special. All I know is that it's gross and there's poop. There's gross and it's, there's poop. KT Trilogy. I could not find anything about this. Uh, and maybe I didn't look hard enough, but I couldn't find anything about this. I don't know exactly what that stands for, but I assume it means kill and torture. <laughs> That's what people be doing on this list. But it's also a porn thing, so maybe it's not that. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a porn thing. The Motel Files. Okay, sister, so this one's another one of those big triggering ones. It's, it's a big old BDSM thing, and it's, some of it is, is questionably consensual, uh, I, I think, is, seems to be the bit. But also, supposedly, and I, I could be wrong, again, a lot of this is hearsay, supposedly this is where the notable video came from, where a woman, I believe it's a woman, has a, a massively prolapsed butt, and then a guy runs up and, 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 and ejaculates on the, on the prolapsed butt. And you're like, wow, amazing. I believe this video, that particular aspect of the motel files is currently being used in different like websites to shock people all the time as kind of like a pop-up. Whatever, I guess. Ginky Ginky. Oh, all right, get out of here, Strawberry. I, I don't want you to know about this. So Ginky Ginky has a reputation, so you should probably already know about it. There are videos, uh, and if you don't wanna watch the videos, what are you doing here? Cause I'm gonna talk about it. So Ginky Ginky is basically fish porn, but it's not just fish porn. It's fish BDSM and fish, it's fish shit. It's just, it's some fish shit. You know, some people, they got a foot fetish, right? They see foot and they're just like, oh, I gotta touch that foot, you know? And they get really horny for the foot. Some people are like that with fishies. Some people see a fishy and they're like, I wanna fuck that fish. Now, I don't think anybody literally with their dick fucks a fish in this series, but I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe they do. You know, I wouldn't put it past him. What am I fucking talking about? So Ginky Ginky is fucking abhorrent. It's a woman is beaten with a fish for like a long period of time. And then she has like the fit, the, there's like fish guts and those are just shoved everywhere. They also put live eels into a person and then they squirm around inside them. There's another time where they put an octopus inside a lady. Why did they put an octopus inside a lady? It's okay, cause it seems like this is kind of like, people people are into it, like they like it. Uh, and I know this because apparently it's pretty common in Ginky Ginky films to just cut to a shot of people ejaculating on fish. I'm sorry. I, I really didn't mean to make you imagine that. But don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. In all of these Japanese sort of like absolutely fuck horrible things that are like pornographic and terrible, uh, there are no genitals to worry about because they are all blurred. So don't worry, you're not gonna see any dirty peepees. Only people getting their absolute shit fucked and wrecked by fish and by an octopus and by guts of fish. Saddest Scream, volume one to five. I think this is another one of those things where it's it's on the list mostly because it's obscure. It's not necessarily something that's particularly special, but it does find its way onto the list because like not a lot of people have heard of it and it is 
quite an entry into this particular field. It's a lot of sadistic stuff. It's a lot of faux snuff. It's a lot of like BDSM porn and torture stuff. You've seen stuff like this. It's guinea pig, but with porn. Tumbling Doll of Flesh is often compared to this a lot. And I think that's because of the mixture between porn and snuff. They're not always killing people, sometimes they're having sex. Running parallel between the, the constants of, of having sex and killing people is sort of where this particular series becomes way worse than a lot of other ones. No Vaseline, the great porn swindle. <sighs> Everything I looked up about this, it was just extreme BDSM and scat porn and it's mostly notable because it's named that, but it, it isn't really anything all that different from what we've already experienced. Matter of fact, it just marries really good with this whole particular part of the iceberg because it's just more of that. It's just more of the same. If you've seen scat and BDSM stuff, well, you've probably seen at least somewhat some of this. Yeah, so scat, BDSM, porn, and it's mildly effective. Some people have a problem with it. We are on the last part and thank God in heaven. <laughs> I tell you what, I can't wait till this is over so that I can take a shower. And then after I take a shower, I'm gonna think of like 10 video ideas that don't have anything to do with scat porn and I'm gonna make those videos next. Ah, oh, wouldn't that be nice to make those and not the scat porn. <laughs> Imoco Sexualis Dium Cavallo. So this is a film about how someone used the beautiful, wonderful body that Mother Nature and or God or whoever uh, blessed upon you uh, to fuck a donkey. That was a long way to say that a woman fucks a donkey, but a woman super fucks a donkey. And apparently there's like this B plot in the movie where a guy goes out and just gives AIDS to a bunch of people. Luckily, if, if you're tired of seeing someone fuck a donkey, it'll just cut straight to someone giving somebody AIDS. So that's good. We are at the bottom of the list. And, and, and I know, you know, okay, so first is tragedy, then is farce, right? Now we're at the end and it's kind of a joke now to me. It's like, it's so horrible at this point that it's like, on another plane of existence as far as like fucked up things go. And honestly, fucking a donkey is pretty spicy. That's a fiery activity. Fetus munchers one and two. Okay, so no one online wants to talk about these. Like I can't seem to find anybody openly willing to admit that they've watched this. And I have a feeling that that has something to do with there being some problem with this. Like people don't like it. And when people make reviews of it or publish it, it seems to get taken down a lot. And I don't think it's getting taken down by the creators. I think it's getting taken down by websites that don't want to host whatever this is. From what I saw, it's just some gore stuff. There's some real gore in there too. Um, and a lot of it's like porn stuff. It's kind of a mixtape, but it's really rare and very shocking. And also something you'll realize as we go along too, is that some of this stuff, it's actually easier to see this stuff than to actually find people giving it thoughtful criticism or talking about what the contents of this thing is. Don't be tempted if there isn't good journalism about this stuff to just go diving in unless you really feel like you can handle it. And something about fetus munchers one and two sounds like I'm not gonna have a great time with this one. And it's, it's okay because I couldn't find it anyway. <laughs> Snuff R73. So this one is a rabbit hole. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about this particular one and a lot of debate about how bad this thing is, where you can get it, and what exactly is in it. So there's like three or four different versions of this. There is one on the surface web that people talk about a lot, like supposedly one on the deep web you can go buy from a guy on the deep web, but supposedly people have purchased it and have watched it and because they've watched it they can they can clearly say with without any hesitation that there's no actual cp in it people have been talking about this one in particular as being a an illegal film with cp in it it might be illegal somewhere i don't know i don't know what the deal is with this one and maybe there is a version somewhere in the world that has cp in it but supposedly the readily available version that people are watching of this does not have CP in it. However, however, it does have a ton of footage of a bunch of like bombed out children. So instead of seeing 
you know, CP related shit, instead you're seeing bombed out children. Not any better, really. I still probably wouldn't seek this one out as it is a mixtape of some of the worst shit that you can see in the world. And I do really want to make a distinction here. We are, we have completely left the world of narrative behind. Now we are mostly talking about mixtape films. And what a mixtape film is, is basically somebody edits together a big sequence of different clips of shit that people probably don't want to see or know about, and then they have to endure in real time. So it's kind of an endurance test on how much nihilism you can handle or how much like gross porn you can handle. Snuff R73 is supposedly one of the worst ones of that. It's one of the worst mixtape films. Also supposedly the CP version is called the Vorsch Cut, I believe, and it is supposedly an urban legend. Registrato Fite 3. This is a mixtape with over 100 clips in it. And the clips are like gore, animal shit, people getting fucked up, people doing fucked up stuff. A lot of animal shit, a lot of porn gore in this one. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say other than like it's 100 clips and some of them are things that you'll see in some of these other ones. Some of them are, are unique and, and their own, so it ends up at the very bottom of the list. But apparently, yeah. Mixtape movie, probably bad to see. Fubar. Okay, so this is notably one, considered to be one of the worst compilations, like one of the worst mixtape movies. It's another one of those mixtape films filled with real death, gore, violence, all the, the classics. But this one supposedly has a weird sense of humor in that sometimes it just cuts to porn that's just fucking hilarious. But also I do believe there's like some, yeah, I mean just some of the worst like live leak kind of shit that you can, you can possibly see some of the worst like, and so the bit is it's not necessarily illegal and there is like statute of limitations on some of this stuff and some of the stuff is how are you going to get rid of it? Like if it's around if it's spread around this much like how could law enforcement possibly remove it from the entire internet if they do go missing there's always like a weird conspiracy about whether or not law enforcement removed it but also a lot of this stuff is pretty widely going to get you banned from most places for posting it yeah I mean it's a, it's a big collection of a bunch of that stuff and if that's your vibe then there you go and if it's not your vibe um, have you considered watching Godzilla vs. King Kong? MD Pope, one through three. All right, so this is like considered to be one of the worst ones. There's like 63 clips in this, I think, in the first one, at least. You know, people being burned alive. There are people being killed in accidents. MD Pope stands for the most disturbed person on planet Earth. And, you know, to be honest with you, uh, the Cinemagore person that I, that I hear about sure does seem like the type. I cannot imagine being the editor on MD Pope. Imagine clocking the like at least five or six hours it took to whip this some bitch together, right? Like that would have taken at least a, a day. The, you don't hear about any of our classic editors working on stuff like that, do we? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people consider this one to be the current holy grail of holy fucking shit uh, as far as like really bad stuff goes. There are many, many, many holy grails of holy fucking shit, depending on which kind of holy fucking shit you're looking for. It's kind of a, a wide variety as far as that stuff goes. Orgish Collection. Okay, so this is another mixtape bit, and it's a collection of some of the worst shit that, uh, ye, that was ever on Orgish, which was like a place where people commonly posted a lot of really despicable videos that you probably don't want to watch. This website, I believe, believe has been rebranded into Live Leak. I think Orgish is mostly just like some of the classics that you'd see on Live Leak. So a lot of like beheadings, a lot of like cartel killings, gore, violence, everything like that. It's porn. It's all in there. And then Porn Gore 1 and 2 is just, yeah, mixtape collection of some of the worst porn gore that exists that you have to endure. Most of it's pretty bad. I really, I feel like I see the, the finish line and it's like right down there and all I have to do is stop talking about this particular part of the iceberg. So here's the iceberg again. We have talked about every single thing on this iceberg and, and I think by this point, 
Genuinely, you and I have grown as people, and we now know about a lot of things that we didn't previously know about the world, and about things people did with their bodies, and with their souls and their spirits, and with their time on Earth. So, so there it is. We have done it. Wow. I wish I could say that I was finished. I wish I could say that I was done, but I'm not. I'm now going to quickly, briefly tell you about a couple of the things that you can watch that are involved in these particular things, like these collections specifically, that you should know about. Like me telling you about these absolutely horrible things might spare you some grief in the future. So understand that I don't take a lot of pleasure in telling you about these next couple of things, but I feel like I need to so that you're aware of them. Especially if you're going to be watching like MD Pope or something like that, because this stuff is in there. It's all in there. I would like to stress one more time that all of this stuff is around. You can see it, it's not hard to find. The Mr. Hands video, yeah, Mr. Hands is a guy who had sex with a horse and died. His buddy filmed that, and that is in uh, a lot of mixtapes. Three guys, one hammer. Three guys and a hammer kill some people. You get to watch that, and it's real. It's a bummer, and it sucks. And I am i can't stress to you enough that this stuff fucking sucks. One lunatic, one ice pick. So, uh, Luca Magnata is a serial killer who killed, uh, someone and filmed it and put it on LiveLeak. It's a very surreal video. <laughs> it's a very surreal video. This man also killed a lot of cats and it's horrifying, terrible. There's a documentary all about it. You should learn about that. It's called Don't Fuck With Cats. But yeah, he did super murder someone and eat them and then mailed parts of their body to, uh, different political groups. Uh, smashing videos. I don't like this. Uh, wanting- I don't like talking about this one because this one fucking really upsets everybody on earth. There is a subsect of pornography that is all about uh, hot women smashing living animals with their asses. And then if their asses don't kill them, then they kill them with their high heels. Funky Town. Okay, so Funky Town is a horrible, horrible cartel murder scene. And the reason it's called Funky Town is because in the background of the murder, you can hear the song Funky Town playing. Yeah, this, it's, it's really bad. I don't want to tell you anymore. Toolbox Murders Tape. So the Toolbox Murders, uh, notably one of the Toolbox Murderers recorded what uh, he was doing <laughs> to a, a victim. He recorded the torture of this victim who was basically begging to die. It's just the most upsetting audio you can just, you can hear, and there's so much footage of people hearing this audio and then running from the room, like just trying to get away from the concept of the audio. It's really, really fucking bad, and they currently, I believe, use it to de desensitize people in the FBI, so um, bad fucking audio. Don't look that one up. After school special. So supposedly this one is about uh, some guy uh, murdering children with a knife. The Bjork stalker. So uh, Bjork had a stalker and apparently at one point the stalker got very infuriated that Bjork started dating Dennis Rodman. <laughs> he decided to mail her a bomb and kill her, but she didn't get the bomb. Her like maid or someone close to her got the bomb and it killed them. Bjork was spared from that. She did, I believe, catch him like in her house once. But yeah, he, he did kill himself and filmed the entire process of him deciding to do this, all because she decided to date Dennis Rodman. Misogyny is so stupid. Ronnie McNutt. Okay, so this one's a recent thing uh, that's that's going around a, a lot. The, that's I don't like talking about it, but it's one that I feel like I have to mention so that you are aware of it. Basically, there's this video of a guy uh, blowing his head off with a shotgun and it's horrible. A while back, people were getting in hot water for editing it into TikToks. So there'd just be like a regular TikTok going and you'd be like, oh, it's a TikTok. And then all of a sudden it would cut to that happening. What a bunch of assholes. And that will do it for now. I hate my fucking job. Okay, so let's decompress here real quick. It's not like there is information on Earth that 
upon knowing it, is just gonna break your brain and kill you or something, or make you not wanna live anymore. These sorts of things have a tendency to color your existence. That is to say that it, it's changing the way that you approach reality. Easy to look at this and to fall down this rabbit hole and to learn about all these things and think, oh my God, I'm gonna have an existential crisis. Like this, especially at the bottom rungs of this sorts of things. Now is a great time for us all to remember that our existence is being colored by the things that we're experiencing. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that is entirely that existence, but rather the colors we're currently seeing it through. If this bothers you, then I recommend not doing this anymore, or taking a break, or going out and seeing some friends. Call your family. Call your friends. There's a whole world out there and it, it's hard as shit. I'm not gonna say it isn't hard as shit. It's hard as shit and it's mean and nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody. If anything, I think something like this is a great unifying factor. Everybody can unanimously look at this iceberg and say, wow, fuck all of that. And you know, I kind of think it's a great thing that we all unanimously are watching this or making this right now, we're talking about this, and we're all simultaneously going, wow, fuck that. A lot of people don't want humanity to be this. We wanna be better than this. We have to remember that this is unfortunately a part of our existence. This is a color palette. In the same way that anything can color your existence, so can this. So it's important to remember all the other colors. And unfortunately, while some of these things, I guess, are kind of worth celebrating, then maybe some of them, yeah, sure. Some of them are achievements of some kind, but for the most part, a lot of these are kind of bad movies. <laughs> a lot of these are, you know, are, are not great. And I'm sure that if, if somebody had the ability to make something that, that, was, that was good and uplifting and meant something to, to humanity, they probably would probably be doing that. I think most people would rather be doing that than this. But now you know about this, and that implicates you. That implicates you in the same way that it implicates me. If anything, it means that we have to live our lives better. Something to remember when everything is terrible and you feel like a horrible person and you feel like the world hates you, to remember that you have not even scratched the surface on how bad a person can be. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this iceberg. I've been working on it for too long and I'm ready to be done with it. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a like and uh, that is the little thumb up and consider subscribing, hit the little bell. Might be hitting 100K sub soon. I might have already hit it, I don't know. I, I, I'm shooting this video and then I'm gonna edit it and then it's gonna come out later. So I can't actually know my sub count at the very moment. I can't wait to talk about something more fun, more exciting, not this shit anymore uh, now that I've done this. Because of that, I want to just sort of ask. I would love to hear from you. You know, what should I cover next? What iceberg should I do next? Should I try to do another iceberg? Should I do one that's not quite so depraved? What if there was a fun one? What if there was one that was like cryptids or ghosts or something? That could be kind of fun and spooky. Mostly, I just wanna do something different. <laughs> something not this. <laughs> so please consider leaving your comments and uh, I will see you soon. If you love what I do, please support me on Patreon and I'll be seeing you next time. I love you. I love you. Let's do one more big hug, okay? One more big hug, okay. Big hug. Okay, I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye now. It won't burn. I don't want to host this show no more.